Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. So today, we're gonna go over the KRX, my last ride. We're gonna talk about what worked, what didn't work, and what needs to be changed. So first of all, if you watched my last video, the ride video, I said everything went great. Well, that's pretty much true. But let's go ahead and let's jump into this and let me tell you how everything did since I did all the installs. So first of all, let's talk about the box. So the box switch did really well. There's a couple key features I really like. One, I like the tactile function of the switch. It's a nice little micro switch that clicks on and you get the nice indicator light. The next thing is it's water resistant. This thing sat out in the rain for probably five or six hours with no ill effects at all. I do like that you have the functions where you can double click and program it to do the strobe or flash. It's a one click off. And then you can just put it back to the normal on. I don't perceive myself using that feature much, but it's there. The other thing I really like is if you have stuff on as you're driving, you come up to somebody at night and you need to turn all your lights off. Instead of clicking all the buttons, you can click the master switch. When you get past that person or obstacle, you click the switch again, and they're right back to where they were, and you can just manually turn them off as needed. So a Vox switch really is an improvement over the standard rocker switches like I have here in the Pioneer. Yeah, these switches are pretty common. It's nice click on off the problem i've run into them is they constantly break on me and what do i mean by break well it's probably because i buy cheap switches but i'll go to turn on and off and over time whether it's water dust something it gets in there and the contacts get corroded or just stops working it's an easy fix i can pop the old switch out put a new one in but honestly that box switch really is the way to go if i would known about it when i wired the pioneer I would have put one in here too. So now let's talk about the iPad mount. The iPad mount did really well. Nice flip up, like, just like that. But this thing never once came loose through about 150 miles of trails. I did pull the iPad out when um, I would get done riding, throw it on the charger, uh, could review my maps, whatever I needed. I really like that I could record everything. Nice big screen, and then as you can see, I threw an extra pair of gloves and my charging cables and stuff are in there. So I had no issues with the iPad mount at all. And being that the spring is so strong, this never moved. So this is a definite do again. Well, that kind of takes care of the electronics part of it because the box switch, well, it's really simple, it's pretty rugged, and it's affordable. The lights, my cheap light bar did great, the mirrors did great, my homemade chase light, they all did really well. And they came in pretty handy, especially that chase light during the dusty situations. But now let's get into some real stuff, the tires and the springs, because that's what people want to know about. And that's what I want to tell you about. All right, let's talk about the suspension setup that I'm running. First, let's talk about the All Things UTV Tender Springs right here. Honestly, they're really good. I'd say they're better than stock. I don't know if they're the advertised 60% better, but they're better than stock. So I just measured it. Without the skid plate, I am at 16 inches in the front, 16 and a half inches in the rear. That's just about perfect. If I recall the stock settings, it's 14 and a half inches of ground clearance. Now, the stock tires measure out just around 30 inches. These measure out at 34. So it should be two inches taller. So I'm a little short there, but that's okay. I also have let some air pressure out of these tires. The springs, for the most part, have not really settled, maybe a quarter of an inch. But again, I've been playing with the air pressure on the tires. I'm really happy with the comfort of the ride. So all things UTV springs are really a good bang for your buck. You're not spending, you know, double or triple that for a high-end company to give you bull springs, because honestly, it's just the tender springs that are sagging. Now my shock setup, that is still a work in progress. On the front, I'm running 15 clicks of firmness on the rear. I'm running eight. Now that was kind of all over the place while I was out there camping because I had initially started with these tires at 15 PSI and I had lowered everything in the firmness. Well, it was a really good ride with eight clicks all the way around. But then as soon as I put the tires down to 10 PSI, it was just a little too squishy for me. It's great in the rocks, but when you get into the 25, 30 mile an hour trails, we're running you know, up for service roads or whatnot. It was just too much body roll. So by just firming up the front end, really was a great compromise. I had a little bit of more flex and grip on the sidewall of these tires. Yeah, I could still get from trail to trail. And worst case scenario, when I got to obstacle, 
I could always get out and lower the shocks, but you know what? It did really good as it is. So let me show you a quick difference on a rock I have in my front yard between these X comps at 10 PSI. Now remember they're a 10 ply versus the Pioneer with the System 3 350s, eight ply at 10 PSI. And look at the sidewall flex difference. Now running these System 3 tires did really well, but there was one issue I had. And believe it or not, it only happened to one side. Let me show you. So this is the driver's side. And as you can see, there is clearance between the tire and that shock guard. If I come over here to the passenger side, as you can see, that shock guard has been uh, chewed away. Basically the tire self clearanced right down in here. This tire didn't start to self clearance until I got into some off camber stuff off road. Now I did pull over, I checked everything out and nothing is bent. I probably had 20 or 30 miles on the tires driving around the neighborhood before I took it off road. And I didn't hear it to start self clearancing until I got into some off camber stuff. Does it bother me? No. But is it something you need to think about if you're going to put a larger oversized tire on your KRX? Absolutely. Well, there you have it. There's a down and dirty quick walk around of the KRX after its first big ride with all the modifications I've done over the last six weeks or so. So most importantly, it didn't break. I got in the rocks. I was climbing some ledges about 32, 33 inches. And as long as I didn't balance the front end, it did really well. I was concerned of snapping an axle or a drive shaft because these are big, heavy tires if they grab. Let's talk about the tires. Tires did great. Um, I'm not ready to give an in-depth review yet because I only have about 150 miles on them while I'm off-road. Um, I want to get some more off-road miles before I can give you an in-depth review. But honestly, they're doing well. They look good. Now, the downside is I did have the one side self-clearance in the rear. I'll do a little bit more investigations on that but I'm not too worried about that. I mean, if that's the worst thing that happened over a whole weekend riding, that's, that's pretty good in my eyes. The suspension, the all things UTV uh, shocks, the, the top tender springs did really well. Now, I think the stock valving of the factory shocks is really good and the bottom spring doesn't seem to sag. It's just the tender springs. Can you spend three times as much at a name brand high end place? Absolutely. And then get it more dialed in. But I think these ride better than factory, but that's for my style of riding. You'll have to decide on your own. The iPad mount with the old uh, Chevelle license plate holder, again, was perfect. I would definitely do that again. I like that I can see everything, even with the helmet on, and I can zoom in and out. I can also listen to the music from the iPad going into my helmet, and not everyone in the forest has to hear me. The Folding seat bases also did very well. Now, if you recall, I have the Pro Steel on the driver's side and the Warp 9 on the passenger side. The Pro Steel has a little bit of play, but it is easier to get in and out of the vehicle. If I were to do it again, honestly, I'd go Warp 9. They're both great products, but I don't take my seats out as much as most would because most of my stuff is dusty. Um, and the Warp 9 is just a little bit of a tighter fit. The only concern I see is the two pins that hold it in. They could get some corrosion or debris on there, and that could cause an issue in the future. But honestly, I haven't had any in the last couple hundred miles. The Vox switch was phenomenal. I really like all the features it had. And like I said, it sat out in the rain, and there's no ill effects to it. So current setup is pretty good. Um, I still got to play with the stiffness and the shocks all the way around, depending on my driving style but I got the ride height set just perfect. Like I said, I'm 16 inches in the front and the tender springs only settled maybe a quarter of an inch. So I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned a little something on the setup. The worst thing that happened to me was the self clearancing. And honestly, if that's all that happened in a weekend of riding, I did pretty good. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Until next time.